an idea. I think the only way we're going to see real change in the NFL is having all aspects of the federal government, state government, private companies, nonprofit organizations, domestic violence, women's rights advocates, and this entire country bringing to bear pressure on the NFL to make some real changes. You know, Allison, I'm really disturbed because when I look at how the NFL has treated its domestic violence cases, there seems to be this sense that they want to wait to see what the law does. Like in the case of the 49ers, you know, they're, they're waiting to see for that particular player, Ray McDonald, if charged are going to be filed. Then there's another case with the Panthers where, you know, this guy, uh, Greg Hardy, has been convicted, but they're waiting to see what happens with his appeal. The NFL doesn't have to follow what county prosecutors all over this country do. It can set its own zero tolerance policy and hold its players accountable. But then, and it's time for them to do that. Uh, but, but then, Dave, how would it even work? They would yeah. lose, they would be suspended or lose their job even before being adjudicated because a woman accused them? of something? Yeah, look, I, I've spent my professional life as a sports writer writing about violence against women and domestic violence in sports. It's abhorrent to me. That being said, I think the, I respectfully disagree about the idea of zero tolerance. If zero tolerance means that the player will be removed from the NFL permanently, one strike and you're out. And I'll tell you why I disagree, because having spoken to domestic violence experts over the past week, one of the things that could potentially do is actually disincentivize women from coming forward to say anything. You have to keep in mind, a lot of NFL players come from impoverished backgrounds. The typical NFL career is only three and a half years. You have three and a half years to make money that is supposed to give you bank for your entire life. The pressure and the disincentivizing that that could put on a woman to not come forward, if it means she's going to economically dislocate her family and her future, would be profound. The NFL has to set up ways, the, the current system is ridiculous, I completely agree with that, but it has to set up avenues of confidentiality so women can come forward and ask for the help that they want with the self-determination that they need. Okay, Soraya, is that the answer? Yes, I think uh, Dave is on the right track when he says that, um, you know, because that is a huge concern. Um, you know, we sort of tend to think of these situations of domestic violence as only the violence that occurs in these relationships, right? But, you know, these women, um, it's not like uh, the situations in these relationships are horrible all the time. There's something that's keeping them there. Um, of you know, course. I mean, that's what we've learned over these past few days, that women have all sorts of reasons for staying, some of them and intimidation. But I just want to show you, this is basically the file of, since 2010, how many NFL players have been arrested for domestic violence, at least 20. So, Areva, something has to happen. Mm -hmm. yeah, and let me just respond quickly, Allison, yeah. to what the other panelists said. If you were to play that argument out to its fullest extent, you would say we shouldn't have criminal punishment for domestic violence because that could disincentivize women from coming forth because they know their husbands or spouses are going to be arrested and prosecuted. So the fact that there's going to be consequences isn't going to change. Right, but, in terms, it doesn't but, but, prevent women from coming forth. That's so we a good have to be argument, careful Reba, with that but, argument. But I, I want to ask you, I want to challenge you on your point. You do you think that people should lose their jobs before they're adjudicated just on an accusation? What I'm saying is there should be a full investigation and a determination, and it doesn't have to be at the level of a criminal standard. Think about what happens in a criminal case. The standard is beyond reasonable doubt. That is an incredibly high standard. In the workplace, we often fire people because of sexual harassment, racial discrimination, and other infractions because there are rules set up in that company. And it doesn't mean the person has committed a crime or there's been a criminal adjudication, but there's standards and violations of company policy. Go ahead. And all we're saying in the NFL is get some policies that make sense, and if people break them, have some consequences. Dave, go no, ahead. I, I completely agree with that, that, that there, the NFL needs a much better, much smarter policy about how to deal with violence against women, and a proactive policy. The reason yeah. why Roger Goodell is in trouble is because he's re been reading from the same playbook that the NFL has been reading from for decades, which is that when violence against women takes place, you brush it under the rug and you cover it up. It's time for women's voices to be heard. The thing that you don't want to do, though, I just got to go back to this, is if anything that disincentivizes women from coming forward has to immediately be looked at with a little bit of a side eye, because what you don't want is women staying in relationships because they think that they are going to destroy the family unit themselves. There needs to be a way that they can get the help that they want. Yeah. There needs to be confidential counseling. The NFL's current standard for counseling was
was Ray Rice and Janae Rice coming into his office and talking in front of him together. That is obscene by any standard of how you deal with domestic violence. That's what needs to change.